I'm Dean Callahan. I'm the new dean of the College of Business, and I arrived August 15th. So you can go out on the web and click me when my hair, I'm having a good hair day. <laughs> it is indeed my pleasure today to introduce the president of our university. I am just so impressed with President Ramsey. He is the only president that has ever talked to me on an interview. And I actually spoke with him and felt like I had met a new friend. And when I showed up at Louisville, I found this was really who he was, just a warm and friendly person. We are really lucky, I believe, to have him in our college. He is a member of the Faculty of Economics. Um, today, and he has many, many renowned awards, as most of you know. But today, he's going to talk to us about the state of the state economy and its impact on our campus life. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Ramsey to our college. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn, um, and we welcome you. We're, we're excited uh, to have your leadership at the University of Louisville. Uh, the, this class, quotes into class, uh, is really, somebody said, well, I've never been to one of these before. I said, it's because it's the first. And the person who came up with the idea was Becky Simpson, head of our communications. Say hello to Becky, waved to everybody back there. So Becky said, you ought to do this as part of all the activities of the State of the University. So next Wednesday, we give the State of the University speech uh, that afternoon. And there are a lot of activities uh, starting today that lead up to that event uh, next Wednesday. And we have faculty awards one night. We have a faculty symposium one day and so forth. So this is the first time uh, that we've tried this. And when Becky suggested that I do this, I went back to find some of my old notes from when I did teach on a regular basis. And I found some of my notes. And now you understand why uh, Dean Moyer over here, before Dean Callahan, have said, you can do these kind of things, but you can't be on the faculty on a regular basis and teach on a regular basis. You know, your skills are a little eroded and we don't want you bringing down the quality of the college. So uh, anyway, I appreciate everybody being here. If I'd known anybody was gonna show up, we, Charlie would have charged and done what a good market economist would have done and then try to deal with the budget uh, shortfall in that way. In 202, okay, Economics 202, uh, Principles of Economics, Macroeconomics, we talk about really, these are exciting, aren't they? They're really exciting topics. Gross domestic product, full employment, inflation, and all that stuff. I was trained as an econometrician, a statistician, and I like data and I like data analysis, but today, for the next few minutes, I'm just gonna make some casual observations about the national economy, the Kentucky economy, state budget, and the university uh, budget. So observation number one, I was uh, about 14 years ago, I was at a conference. There was an economist there from the Federal Reserve, the Dallas branch of the Federal Reserve. His name was Dr. Robert Cox, and he said the business cycle is dead. He said that uh, we're in a period of continued prosperity. If you remember the decade of the 90s, it was a roaring period of time in our economy. We had the uh, technology you know, bust or bubble bust uh, around 2000, but it was a, a time when the economy was really moving along pretty well. But uh, observation number one, the business cycle does still exist. One of the ways that we measure uh, economic output, economic well-being is uh, GDP, what you and I consume. Uh, during a period of time, it's data that's collected by the federal government on a quarterly basis. And what I've done here is go back to the year 2002, the green is good. We want the economy to grow. We want the pie to get bigger. And so these are percentages, I don't have that uh, marked on the vertical axis, but this is percentage growth for a three month period in gross domestic product. So our economy is going along, some periods are a little better than others. But then all of a sudden the recession, 2008 and 2009, and the red is bad. That means the economy is really contracting and getting smaller. We're producing fewer goods and services in one time period than we produced in the next time period. 
But the business cycle is alive, and we, we go through these periods, and we've actually had 11 uh, recessions uh, since the uh, World War II, since the Great Depression of the 1930s. And so we started coming out of the recession, and we had some very nice growth, and then you can see I kind of marked off and demarcated years 2010, 11, 12, and, how, uh, and where we are today in 13. So we're, it looks like the economy's coming back. We'd really like growth to be around 3% if we could. That would uh, cover essentially the uh, population growth and provide for uh, uh, real growth. Um, and you can see we had some periods of very nice growth, modest growth, but then all of a sudden here, first quarter of 2011, the economy uh, for one quarter backtracked a little bit. We had some more growth. Then the last quarter of 2012, uh, very, very modest growth, one-tenth of one percent. And then here you see the first two quarters. In fact, this number was just revised last week from 1.7 uh, to uh, 2.5. Here are the 11 post-World War II recessions. And the time period that we've just been through, the recession starting December of 07 from the um, peak of the business cycle to the trough of the business cycle. Uh, we had a real decline in GDP of 5.1%. You can see it's the deepest recession uh, since World War II. So it was not only deep, but in terms of duration lasted 18 months. So uh, this was the worst economic downturn uh, really in 50 or 60 years. Going back to the little recession in November of 1948, um, that's when I was born, so I may be something about uh, that, that I was born in a recessionary period, I don't know, but uh, anyway. So, um, observation two. Just when we thought the recovery was taking hold, okay, I mean, you go through these downturns, it happens, for a variety of reasons, and there was the, the, uh, the collapse of the mortgage markets and a lot of uh, overextension of credit by banks to, People were getting homes, uh, people who were making thirty and $40,000 a year were getting mortgages for $700,000 homes. There were a lot of issues that led to the recession of 2007, 2008, 2009. We came out of the recession, it took a while, but then 2011, you know, we had that one quarter of negative growth. And 2011 was interesting because there were what we called a number of black swans. And a black swan is an improbable event, something that you don't see very often. And so we had the tsunami, the nuclear meltdown, the slowdown in the Japanese economy. We began to see and still see today uh, civil unrest in a number of countries around the globe. Uh, we began to see the meltdown of some of the European economies. We actually even saw slowdown in the, Jap in the Chinese economy, even though it's still growing. Chinese economy had been growing at double digit rates and it, it had slowed down. So the, the recession, as we were coming out of the recession, the recovery really never fully took hold. Uh, I mean, we're growing, we're, we're, we're coming back, but uh, we really haven't roared back and I'll show you that in just a second. 2012, we had the effects of uh, Hurricane Sandy. We had the sequestration and um, that impact of uh, cutback in federal government spending and so forth. So the economy is coming back. It is recovering, but we're not back yet. And what I really uh, like to focus on in what I call observation three is what I call the real problem. And then again, this is sort of my bias of what I look at. And I look at uh, how many people are working, how many people are out of jobs. This is national data. This is a different data source. It's the Bureau of Labor Statistics. They collect uh, uh, data on how many people are working, how many people are unemployed. They actually have a uh, household survey and then an institutional uh, business uh, survey that they do. What I've shown you here is actually the number of people on a monthly. So this is monthly data. And what I've shown you here is the number of people and the job change from one month to the next. So here, red, again, uh, this is bad. These are people who are losing their jobs. So if you look down here, December of 07, February of 08, 08, 09, even up into 2010, 
This is a month when 830,000 people in the United States, this is national data, lost their jobs. So from one month to the next, 830,000 people lost their jobs and had to deal with the impacts of that. As we came out of the recession, we saw some job growth and we saw another downturn. And you can see over the last couple of years, we've had some job growth for the most recent month for which data is available. We've added back 162,000 jobs. But when you look at this time period and look from the end of the recession to where we are today and go to this chart, we still have 1.9 million fewer people working today in the United States than we had at the beginning of the recession. So at the beginning of the recession in the United States, roughly 138 million people were working. Seven and a half million people lost their jobs during the recession and had to deal with the consequences of that and what that means in terms of health insurance and paying their bills, their mortgages, foreclosures on homes and so forth. We're adding jobs. We've gone back and we've added a little over five and a half million jobs, but there's still, well today, 136 million people working. 1.9 million fewer people working today than were working in 2007. And to me, that's the real problem. That's the drag uh, that we're seeing in the economy, and that's why uh, the, the recovery to the recession uh, has been slow. Observation four, we live in a different economy today than uh, has existed historically. Our economy has been changing for a number of years. We live in a new economy, a knowledge-based economy, where brain power and human capital is the most important input into the production process. We live in a global economy. As we've seen, what happens in Syria and what happens around the globe has an impact, not just in Louisville, Kentucky, but Columbia, Kentucky, and throughout our nation. If you look at the new economy and you look at the uh, market capital, uh, capitalization of some of our major companies, our largest companies in terms of market cap. Uh, energy company, uh, Exxon, Mobil, the largest uh, market cap. But look what's next, Apple, Google, of course, um, Warren uh, uh, Buffett's uh, Berkshire Hathaway, Microsoft, drug company Johnson & Johnson, Walmart, General Electric, Chevron, Wells Fargo, Financial. What you're seeing here are some of the largest companies today. When you look at Microsoft, you look at Apple, you look at companies like that, uh, they were ad people's ideas. They were companies that were the, the, the um, result of a thought process. Someone said, I can do something better than it's ever been done before. And they went off in their garage and they came up with a technique or a process for developing an idea. And so uh, what that leads us to understand is that the jobs of today are very different than the jobs of yesterday. And we don't even know what the jobs of the future are going to be. So education is more important than it's ever been. I'll tell the story. I grew up in Louisville, Kentucky, born in 1948. I remember when Appliance Park was opened in 1954. Um, and at its heyday, General Electric made all home appliances out at Appliance Park. Made refrigerators, stoves, microwaves, washers, dryers. Employed 25,000 people at that one facility. Today they employ about 4,800 people. Uh, to pay my way through college, I worked at 15th and Hill, Brown and Williams and Tobacco Company. We made cigarettes. Some would say, well, it's good that we're no longer making cigarettes uh, uh, in Louisville, but uh, we've lost a lot of the manufacturing jobs that have been important to us and uh, manufacturing jobs will always be important but we've lost a lot of those jobs. If you look at education in terms of the unemployment rate today, for those with a BA or higher the unemployment rate is 3.8 percent, for those with well, the national average 7.4, for those uh, with less than a high school degree, high school degree, you can see the val value of a college degree. And uh, so what's the point of all this, okay? Everybody still awake? Let me look around here. Uh, let's talk about Kentucky. Let's now move to Kentucky. Here I went back to 1980 and then bring us kind of up to date. The early 80s, uh, the recession of the early 80s was a killer for Kentucky. Interest rates were 18%, 20%. 
had a profound impact on the, on, on the industries that were important to us, manufacturing and agriculture. Historically, Kentucky has been a manufacturing state, an agricultural state, and a coal mining state, a mining state. And those are the three economic industries where we have a higher percentage of employment uh, than the national average. So this was a tough time. This was really a tough time for the Commonwealth of Kentucky. But when we came out of that, actually Kentucky did pretty well for about 15 years, uh, from the mid 80s to 2000, 2001. In fact, during that period of time, employment growth in Kentucky actually exceeded employment growth nationally. During that period of time, personal income growth in Kentucky uh, exceeded the national average. But then uh, there was a little bitty uh, recession in 2001 and 2002. At the national level, it was almost a blip on the radar screen. Very, very small recession. It had a profound impact in Kentucky, we, and I'll show you that in just a second. We began to lose a lot of jobs during that recession, and in many ways, we've never really fully, totally recovered from that. The recent recession has also had a pretty profound impact on us, but this was a good time, and it was a good time for the state budget. It was a good time for higher education. It was a good time for education. The economy was growing. There was money. And um, then all of a sudden we hit uh, the last decade, which has almost been a decade lost. When I look at uh, Kentucky's economy, what I really track, again, on a monthly basis is Bureau of Labor Statistics data uh, published monthly, is not the number of people who are not working in Kentucky, but the number of people who are working in Kentucky. And so here I've gone all the way back to January of 2000. And this is, uh, this is monthly data, up, down, up. And uh, so if you go all the way back to January of 2000, we have 1,814,000 people working in Kentucky. Our population today is a little over 4 million, about 4.4 million. So you see we had a little bit of growth. Then this was that downturn. Again, on the national radar screen, it was almost non-existent. A little fire recession, finance, insurance, real estate. Not big sectors in our economy, but what happened here, we began to lose a lot of our manufacturing jobs. First, they were our cut and sew operations, textile industry, um, Fruit of the Loom, companies like that, and uh, Russell Springs and Jamestown and different Frankfurt and different parts of the state. Uh, later, it was our durable manufacturing, some of our very best paying jobs. The economy started coming back and the all-time high employment in Kentucky was reached uh, back at the end of 2007, 1,870,000 people. And then like the light switch was turned out, you can see what happened with the national recession. We lost 120,000 jobs during that recession. In a very short period of time, 120,000 Kentuckians who were working, earning income, one day we're out of work the next day. We've been coming back. And it's up, down, up, down. But for the month of July, the most recent data, we've got 1,846,000 people. A little bit more, but not a whole lot more than we had working over a decade ago. To me, this is the most severe public policy issue that we face in Kentucky. Really, in over a decade, we've really only created 20,000 new jobs. We've got 24,000 people, 24,000 fewer people working today than we had six or seven years ago. If you want to compare the national economy and state economy, the national economy during the recession lost seven and a half million jobs, added back a little over 5.5 million, regained 74% of the jobs they lost. We've done a little better in Kentucky. We've regained about 80% of the jobs we've lost. But we're not back yet. So the recovery is taking place. The economic recovery is taking place, but it's very slow. And here's our manufacturing employment. At one time, we had over 300,000 people in manufacturing. Today, 226. Uh, that's a combination, really, of three things. One, increased productivity, which is good. Uh, second is uh, loss of these jobs to low-paying countries. Uh, the washing machines and refrigerators that were made in Butchell, Kentucky, are now being, paid, uh, being made 
in Mexico and the Caribbean and low-wage uh, countries. And then, of course, this part it, right in there is the recession, that job loss. So we've lost, and, and the reason this is important, historically, those have been our best-paying jobs in Kentucky. Those have been our best-paying jobs. And even right now, we're seeing a little bit of an upturn in manufacturing employment, but a lot of the job gain that we're seeing is in lower wage industries. Good jobs. Drive down I-65 and, and, and go past Louisville International Airport and get down around Brooks and Shepherdsville, and there's one distribution center after another on both sides of the highway. They're employing people, but they're not paying the, the wages that uh, are uh, GE and Ford, and even Ford now, some of their wages are not, uh, the way they've structured their personnel are not what they were before. So in Kentucky, things are better. Uh, the economy's improving. It's coming back, but uh, we're not all the way back yet. All right, what's all this got to do with us at the University of Louisville? There we are, there's our three campuses, downtown, Belknap, and, uh, and the Shelby campus. We're a state institution. Uh, we were a private institution from 1798 to 1970. Came into the state system in 1970, became a state institution. We're state funded, or some might say state assisted. Uh, so uh, if you look at employment on a monthly basis, you have a pretty good idea of what's going to happen to the state budget and therefore what's going to happen to funding for higher education. And the reason for that is the state general fund, and, and I'll show you some data later. This, this is a, a year old, but essentially the state general fund budget, general fund receipts of the state, the tax dollars that the state collects, is a little over $9 billion. $3.5 billion of that is the individual income tax. $3.1 billion is the sales tax. So you can see nearly 75%, three quarters of the state budget three quarters of, the, of what goes to pay for state services comes from the individual uh, income tax and sales tax. When people are working, they're paying the individual income tax. It's withheld from their check. They, they, they never see it. And when people are working, they have income to spend on iPads and iPhones and uh, all kinds of different uh, uh, products that, w that are subject to the sales tax. So, the, the um, employment and income taxes and sales taxes are very highly correlated. So when people are working, it's a good time for the state budget. When people are losing their jobs, it's a tough time for the state budget. Here's the state's general fund over the last few years, going back to 2005, $7,645,000,000. It, it had grown from the previous year, I don't have it up there, 2004, over 9.5%. And that's 9.5% growth. Then we go into 2007, the beginning of the recessionary years, and you can see that we had a growth of, two, you know, it grew 2%, 1%. Then we actually had the depth of the recession in Kentucky, the state's general fund from one year to the next actually declined. We collected less tax money. And now we've, we've been coming back. We've seen that employment growth. We're not back to where we were. In fact, 2011 was a pretty good growth year, 6.5% growth in the general fund. But since then, 3, 3, and 2%. Kentucky is still one of the few states in the nation that has a biennial budget process. And so even numbered years are when the General Assembly meet to adopt a two-year budget. So 2006, the General Assembly adopted a budget. They thought the good times were going to roll forever. Uh, there was, the, the recession really wasn't on the horizon. So uh, the General uh, Assembly adopted a budget based on these growth rates. And when the revenue only grew 2%, what did they have to do? They had to cut the budget. So this was the beginning of budget cuts for us. And from there to there, actually 2013, uh, well actually 2000, and let me get my years straight, 2013, yeah, last year, uh, the University of Louisville has been through eight budget cuts in this period of time. From there down to there, we've been through eight budget cuts. 
So you saw very modest growth. Uh, you saw negative growth. So there was less money uh, for the budget. So there were more cuts. We actually had this sort of anomaly here, nice growth there. We took a cut that year. So, uh, state actually ended up with surplus uh, revenues, ended up with a budget surplus, but the budget had already been cut. Uh, our cut wasn't restored. And then sort of here's where we are uh, today. Now there's two sides to the budget. That's the revenue side. Very much a function of the economy, very much a function of employment. Uh, if the economy's doing well, if we're adding jobs, the revenue side of the budget based on the income tax, sales tax does pretty well. But there's the expenditure side of the budget, okay? And this look at the expenditure side of the budget. If you look at the time period 2008 through 2014, so really sort of the recession to where we are now. In 2014 is the fiscal year that ends June 30th next year. It's the budget year we're in right now. If you look at that period of time, revenues in the state have actually grown 10%. Really not all that bad. Modest growth on an annual basis over a six year period, very modest growth, but revenues have grown. But here's the real problem from the budget perspective. Public pension expenditures have grown 63.5%. Medicaid has grown 42%. Debt service has grown over 30%. Correction spending has grown 15%. K through 12 spending, um, post, uh, uh, K through 12 spending has been protected. SEEK, the SEEK funding has been protected to the maximum degree possible. It's only been cut 1%, but uh, higher education, and this is really uh, UK and U of L, have been cut 14%. So even though revenue has grown modestly, okay? not gangbusters, but modestly, we've been squeezed out of the budget by these other higher priority areas, public pensions, um, Medicaid, and so forth. And so as a result of the changes in the economy, national economy, state economy, and the impact on the state budget, we're a very different institution today than we were 10 years ago, 15 years ago. So here I'll take us back to 1997, 1998, because that's when the Post-Secondary Education Reform Act of 1997 was passed. And that's when we were given our mandate as an institution to be a premier nationally recognized metropolitan research university. That mandate is in the statutes of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. That's the law. That's what drives us every day. At that time, our state appropriation was $126 million. Tuition and fees were $63 million. Uh, other general funds, uh, miscellaneous, 37. Clinical income, research income, 127. Philanthropy, 22, uh, 22 million. Uh, athletics, 17, and some pass-through dollars. These are things that are appropriated to the University of Louisville, and then we pass them through to primarily the University of Louisville Hospital. You can see where we are today. There's been a modest growth in state appropriation, but very modest. You can see what's happened to your tu tuition fees. Some of that is enrollment growth. Th these, are, these are aggregate dollars, so some of that is enrollment growth. But the, 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 the price has gone up. It's gone up dramatically. You can see other general funds, uh, a little bit of an increase. Clinical income and research income have gone up dramatically. And then you can see philanthropic. And actually look, compare that number right there with that number right there. Last year was the first year that private support was larger at the University of Louisville than was state support. Last year we got 142.6 million from philanthropic, from gifts, donations, and state support was 141. We crossed a line there. Athletic Association, athletic budget has grown in our pass-throughs. What's the future hold? Well, uh, nobody knows. You know, we forecast like the weather and we predict football scores and all that kind of stuff. But um, economists really don't know. I think the, uh, the recovery will be okay in Kentucky. It'll continue. I think it's still going to be another year or so 
before everyone who had, everyone who was working before the recession will be back at work. Um, the jobs of the future will continue to be very different than the jobs of the past. And there'll be areas or pockets of real problems in the state. And right now, the biggest problem is Eastern Kentucky with coal mining. Uh, Eastern Kentucky coal is hurting, and in fact, hurting much more than Western Kentucky coal. We'll continue to see a, a difficult state budget and fiscal challenges. Uh, in fact, the preliminary revenue estimates for the next biennium. So in January, the General Assembly comes to town to adopt a budget for fiscal years 15 and 16, two years out in the future. And while these are not official numbers, the preliminary forecast are that revenue will grow by 2.7% and 2.8%. Very modest. Uh, during the decade, uh, remember that golden period I told you in the 80s and 90s, general fund revenue would grow 6, 7, 8%. So very modest growth. And the state structural budget imbalance, the expenditure side of the budget, hasn't been fixed yet. We've tried to fix it in corrections. We've tried to fix it in pensions, but the, uh, we're not there yet. We've, we've made some improvements, but we're not there. Uh, other, and again, these are just forecasts. Uh, I hope I'm wrong. Other expenditure areas of the budget will continue to be a higher priority than higher education. In fact, right now, higher education, for a variety of reasons, not just in Kentucky, but nationally, uh, is under attack. Uh, a lot of people don't think we're accountable in higher education. People don't think we're effective. We haven't done a good job of selling the importance of higher education. And uh, particularly in Frankfurt, one of the themes that you often hear is that higher education has alternative revenue streams, fundraising, clinical income, but also tuition. Uh, 2014, I think we'll, there'll be limited, if any, new funding for higher education. Whatever funding is available uh, will be tied to performance. And the primary performance measure will be how many students are graduating. Uh, Kentucky's per capita income is only about 81% of the national average. We're a low income state. As a native of Kentucky, it hurts me to say that. We're a low income state. Per capita income in Kentucky is 81% of the national average. When you look at why that is, we have a, a smaller percentage of people with college degree than uh, states with higher per capita incomes than us. So there is a correlation between education and per capita income. So the key and the primary focus is graduating students. So whatever uh, funding will be available will probably be tied to performance and other specific initiatives like college readiness, making sure that everybody that graduates from high school is ready to go to college, doesn't need remedial education. And then uh, I think we're gonna even see um, continue more uh, pressure on tuition increases. I think the days of 6, 7%, 5% tuition increases are over. How do we move forward as an institution? This is all, this can be kind of depressing if you let it. So uh, how do we move forward? Our board of trustees back in 2005 adopted seven strategies for moving forward in a tough fiscal environment. As far back as 2005, our board realized that the world was changing. And uh, to meet our mandate, we had to focus uh, on some, doing some different things to keep moving forward. Number one, like everybody, we gotta manage costs. We've cut 114 million out of our budget over the last several years. Uh, we've done some things like self-insurance for our health insurance for our employees. We've done energy management programs, energy audits, billings, trying to be more efficient. Uh, we've done those kind of big things. We've done little things like wash windows every other year instead of every year. So we are saving some money. Second, we're trying to take underperforming assets and make them fully performing. Uh, the Shelby campus, 240 acres of the most valuable property in this community. We've taught some class, it was a private school. When I grew up here, it was Kentucky Southern. They went out of business. Louisville bought the property, University of Louisville bought the property in, in 1969. And we've taught some classes out there, we've done some continuing ed out there, but for the last few years, 
uh, last several years, it's been primarily a place for people to walk their dogs and play soccer. And we're trying to convert that into a performing asset and develop that property. Uh, same thing with Reynolds Lofts and so forth. Get more value out of our intellectual property. Hopefully in the next uh, 60 to 90 days, we'll announce our largest uh, IP deal that we've had in the university's history. Private partnerships use other people's balance sheets uh, instead of our own balance sheets. So uh, the Bellamy, the Province, uh, Cardinal Tent. Uh, those are all affiliated with the University of Louisville, but we, those were built with private dollars. Sodexo has, has did a, we did a survey and said, what do students want in terms of food? And we were told McAllister's and all these Jimmy John's and all these things that I've never eaten at, but anyway, <laughs> uh, that comfy cow and all that. And uh, so we didn't have the money to put those in, so we used the private sector <coughs> fundraising. We're in the final year of a major capital campaign, $1 billion. The consultant originally told us they thought that an institution like the University of Louisville could raise $600 million. Our board uh, originally set the goal at $750 in 2010. Uh, today, Keith, we're at $890 and counting. So uh, we hope that by this time, June 30th, 2014, will be at a billion. Be creative. TIFs or tax increment financing districts. The University of Louisville is an economic engine. I'll show you that in a minute. We got over 6,000 employees. Um, we're important economically to this community and state. And we've worked out at three deals with the state that as we add uh, economic activity, as we add jobs, we ought to get a portion of that tax revenue back. And the first project we did that was our health science campus TIF was approved in 2007. It's a geographical area. As jobs are created in that ge geographical area, we get back 50 cents of every dollar of additional incremental uh, occupational license tax paid to the city. We get back about 80 cents of every dollar of additional state income tax paid back. December 31st, everybody was excited, getting ready to go to the Sugar Bowl, uh, and whip Florida the way we did. I was excited because we got a check from the state and the city for 5.5 million the first year of the TIF. And this year's TIF payment will be about 8 million. We created a TIF for uh, Belknap. Uh, we can't collect any money back from it until we spent $200 million. So go around and look at all the capital construction projects. We get to include the speed, so I know it's a pain for you when you're walking across campus and all that, but just remember, at some point there's gonna be a beautiful art gallery and we're gonna get some of the uh, economic activity generated off that capital expenditure, so just uh, be real patient with it. But uh, the uh, Student Rec Center. So if you add up just those projects, that's well over 100 million in capital. And then uh, on August 29th at Shelbyhurst, we were able to get that created as a uh, TIF of our development out there. Increased clinical income, a lot of controversy over the last uh, two years about our joint venture uh, partnership with Kentucky One Jewish and St. Joe Hospital in Lexington. But again, uh, that's to help us generate more clinical income from our faculty physicians uh, to support our teaching and research mission. We have about 700 uh, faculty physicians at the University of Louisville. And they do an amazing job and they provide care to all people regardless of income. And regardless of where the people are from. Provide a lot of free care to people from Indiana and Ohio, different states like that. But we also get reimbursed for much of that care. And the more care we can provide, the more income we can make to support our academic mission. So those are our seven strategies and now what we're embarking on is uh, the discussions that started last year and we hope to conclude by January or February of this year and that's uh, the University of the 21st Century. The provost is leading these discussions. We'll talk more about this at the State of the University speech next Wednesday. Our Board of Trustees uh, this summer adopted four strategies for moving forward and one is to more clearly identify those areas of excellence where we at the University of Louisville will spend our dollars, that we'll prioritize, and where we can be world class. And they'll be multidisciplinary. 
Uh, there'll be plenty of room for all departments on campus. It's not just a health science initiative, but a campus-wide initiative. Uh, the most divisive issue, our SWOT analysis, uh, strength, weakness, opportunity, and threats analysis last fall that we undertook, and uh, I saw Scott here. Most divisive issue on campus is uh, asynchronous instruction, uh, and we need to deal with it. Uh, Markets are efficient, and people are voting with their feet and going to proprietary schools that teach anything, anytime, to anybody. And so we have to, we have to realize that we've been in a very strong oligopoly position over time, and that's eroding uh, some uh, from what it has been. We've got to continue to look at our organizational structure. And a key piece of that, and something that gives us the opportunity to do that, is our voluntary retirement program, or separation incentive program that we're going through. And then uh, continue to build a culture of excellence in everything that we do. The University of Louisville is very different. Our statutory mandate is very different than the, say, UK. UK is to be a top 20 public research institution. That's their mandate. Ours is different than that. Ours is to be a premier nationally recognized metropolitan research university. And so we don't have to be the biggest. We just have to be the best. And those areas that we pick are the areas where we can be world class. And so, uh, so I like our mandate. And uh, I think we've made a lot of progress. But we've got to find ways to keep moving forward. And uh, we're going to have to do a lot of things different. When I talked about cutting costs, we've cut a lot of costs, but we've been picking the low-hanging fruit. We've got to climb a little higher up into the tree. What makes us think we can do it? I think we can do it. I don't think there's any question we can do it. It's not going to be easy, but look what we've done in the past. Here's where we were, freshman ACT scores in 1998, the year after the reform. That's 1998, 2002. Some people say that's when Dr. Willingans and I started, and it is. But uh, that was the first year we took a budget cut. I mentioned the eight budget cuts. We've actually been through 13 budget cuts in 12 years. We took five budget cuts back in that little bitty recession, and then we took eight more budget cuts. Uh, so uh, here's the average JCT score for this year's freshman class. I see a lot of you in... A couple of years ago, I could say, you all were part of the best freshman class in the history of the university. I can't say it anymore. This year's freshman class is the best <laughs> academically prepared <laughs> freshman class. 25.2. Number of students with ACTs over 27. Governor Scholars, National Merit. Any way you look at it, uh, we're getting better. This is the most important, well, this is the most important number. We were graduating uh, 1,734 uh, people, students, back in 1998. We were graduating 1,000, over 1,000, well, 1,000, more than that now. But here's our goals. Here's our goals in the 2020 plan. So we've made a lot of progress, but we're not done. That's what we've got to keep focused on and be driven to achieve. This ties in a uh, six-year graduation rate, uh, that doctoral degrees, funded research, and so forth. Uh, our community needs us to keep moving forward. For the longest period of time, we could say we, there was only one crane in downtown Louisville, which cranes represent new construction. That was the University of Louisville's nucleus project. In the last 10 years, we've undertaken $1.7 billion of construction, new construction. Some of it's athletics, and right now you've got the soccer stadium under construction. You've got the addition of the uh, softball. But we're finishing up our nucleus project downtown. We've got a um, student rec center that we'll have the grand opening on October 18th, homecoming weekend. Uh, we've got some construction going on on the Shelby campus and so forth. So uh, uh, we're important to this community, not just economically, but in terms of quality of life, in terms of the arts, in terms of the whole social and cultural fiber of our community. And that's never underestimate what we can do. I love this picture. I'm going to show it at the State of the University. So if you come to that, I'm going to try to get Shoney to come and to teach us to make that fierce look like that. But uh, let others underestimate the University of Louisville, but let's never underestimate 
what we can do.